I would like to apologise for my son's behaviour. He is a filthy little f who's been the worst for most of his life and treats me like a c So, uh, Doris Stokes, right, yeah. is, uh, dressed like a dominatrix, yeah. right, and she's dripping hot wax yeah. onto the naked torso of Arthur Millard. Yeah, of course he is. Right, yeah. and, um, he in turn is being pleasured, right, by Dusty Springfield. Oh, <laughs> ex Dusty Springfield's not dead. What? You twat. Dusty Springfield's not dead. Yes, she is. No, she isn't. She is! Of course she's not! You, you, of... She's dead! Of course she's Of course dead. she's not dead! Who am I thinking of? I don't know! Dusty Springfield's alive and well! And playing with Arthur Mullard. No, she's not dead! Oh, God. Well, excellent. Oh. It was going so well, wasn't it? Oh. Oh. <laughs> I like the bit up until then, though. Yeah. I like the idea of Owen Mullard. Well, that's all true. In a farm. We can't do that anyway, still, because he can't do that on the radio, talking about that sort of well, thing. Well, I think... I'll tell you what, though, listening. if we're going to pick on a dead person... Yeah. ...why pick Doris Stokes? <laughs> I don't know! The one dead person you don't pick! <gasps> I know! I know! God! I'll have I mean, to convince her she's dead. But even in real life, she'd harness the powers of the dark side, so I really want I her... I know. Her, you know. She liked the dark side. Getting on our That backs. was her favourite. She's getting on our backs. Don't get me started <laughs> well, on I that. A, oh, goodness me, it's just nothing but innuendo and libel. Spring, I don't believe it's it. We're, we're, in we're, in we're in trouble now. Oh, God. You should have picked someone like Scylla, who is dead. And the bloke with the, um, the gimp mask and the umbrella said, Doris, I'm, even I'm not doing that. Jamaica, and he we're left. leaving it. We're leaving it. God, sorry. Um, I was talking to my parents on the phone the other day, and, uh, I started swearing, and I've never done this before, and it's a terrible thing, because it's, I've crossed this barrier now, I've crossed this line, mm. which I, previously, for 23 odd years, I'd managed to sort of stay the right side of. Yeah. I'm talking to my mum, and she mentions to me that I'm going to lose a lot of money, I don't want to go into it, but I'm going to lose a lot of money, and, um, and she told me how much, it was, uh, 5,000 pounds, I think, she went, uh, I went, F and L. Obviously, I said the, the real thing, yeah. F and L. She just stopped, she just went, pardon me? <laughs> and I thought, what have I done? I thought, I can't explain myself, because she didn't, she didn't know that I knew those words. So I just said, uh, well, uh, that's a lot of money. That got you out of it. That got me out of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you know what I mean? That crossing that step. Yeah. It's quite a terrible thing. It's like, I, I mean, I, I look forward to the day when I can bring a girl home and say, look, I do know about <laughs> sex. <and laughs> twat. No, you can't. But, um... When I was a kid, and I first went to, to senior school, I started to learn all these swear words that I didn't know. Of course previously. you can say the word twat. Right. You're anyway, not meant to. I, I started learning all these swear words, and I went home and I started using the word twat. I just thought it was a, a slightly stronger version of twit. Yeah, you yeah. Know, just, it's, a bit, it's a bit tougher for some reason. Yeah. And so I used to go around saying that, and I'd go, uh, my sister would say, stop ruining my Lego, and I'd go, you twat. Yeah. And, um, uh, make your bed, Steve, no, you twat. I'd say to my mum, right? And I didn't realise what it meant. Right. And my dad... Right? He didn't really know much about swear words, so he started using it as well. He started going, oh, you twat, Steve. <laughs> and, um, do you want to clean the bath? No, you twat. And we just started using it all the time, right? Yeah. So then, at school, Mark Johnson told me what it mean, then, yeah. right? Obviously, I'm stunned. I'm thinking, I can't go around calling my mum a twat. Yeah. So I didn't start, I just stopped using it. Yeah. Like that, just stopped using it. But I didn't, I didn't have the guts to tell my dad what it meant. Oh, no. So he carries on using it, and into this day, we were driving along, he'll say, um, to my mum, Elaine! Watch where you're going, you twat, you great big twat. <laughs> and I just want to say to him, Dad, don't say that to my mum, because she knows, oh, she knows what it means. Oh, no, but really? She's not, she's not going to say to him, oh, God. Ron, would you stop saying that word, because... Yeah, you... same thing happened to me, my dad still says Fouch. Does he? Does he? Yeah. Oh, Felchin, talking of that, right, it's Doris Stokes. Yeah. She's got this huge... Four sailors four and sailors. a big bucket and, like, a weight. Well, that's it, Steve. Is it? It's the news now. Then we're out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've had a few laughs, few tears. Yeah, well, I don't go on about it. <laughs> XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais. Gervais, I've just thought, <laughs> I've just thought of a great game. All right. Um, Emma, who helps us out here, she's just brought in a couple of beers for us. Yeah. All right. And I know you we're have- We're going to drink them after the show because, um, I do not drive the desk and drink. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, okay, don't pick it up, don't pick it up. Okay, right. Because the thing is, there's a picture, all right, right. on, on- the bottle, which I don't think you've seen it yet. No. You? Right, and I guarantee if I turn this bottle round, you're going to start... <laughs> Again, this is good radio, isn't it? You're going to start laughing when you see this picture. Right. Now, before I turn it round, yeah. right, you, hopefully you will laugh spontaneously. Yeah. Um, it's a new competition, all right? You right. can fact us in pictures. You can send pictures in the post, all right? Yeah. Any picture which I can then, during the show, hold up <laughs> and show to Gervais. If he laughs spontaneously, <laughs> you'll win a gift. You'll win a prize. That's a great competition, isn't Gervais. it? And great radio. And great radio. They'll, they'll be laughing at the picture at home, won't they? Exactly. They'll be going, no wonder he laughed. Look at that. Well, all right, there's simple things like that which, which don't work, but the point is... <laughs> 
I, yeah. The point is, right, <laughs> you're still trying, okay. Just let's, let's test it. He's gonna turn this little chubby of pint of beer around, whatever it is. Just calm yourself. Okay. Alright. All right. Don't, don't want you to Hurry up, I wanna drink it. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> Right, play, play oh, a record, Jermaine. Oh, oh, God! <laughs> and Tracy Jacks from 1965 there. <laughs> hey. Cheeky little monkeys. Well, um, I think we've established ourselves there now, Gervais. As, as radio gods. As radio gods. Yeah. We've come up with possibly the most enjoyable radio game yeah. in the history of all things. Basically, what we want you to do is send in pictures, drawings. Is it as good as this? Gervais. Put it away. Mm. We want drawings, pictures, photographs, um, okay, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show them to Gervais. Yeah. Midway through the show. You'll never know when, they might just suddenly pop up, and we'll see if Gervais laughs hysterically. And if he does, you win a prize, I guarantee it. Yeah. It could be that you'll win a couple of pulp tickets if we've got them to give away. Yeah. It might be that you'll win a crate of beer, anything. Yeah. Whatever we've got the hands, you'll win it if you can make Gervais laugh simply by me showing him a picture. Uh, the address is XFM, 97 Charlotte Street, <laughs> London, W1P, 1L. LB, all right? And, uh, you can fax us, of course, 0171 580 1234. I must warn them that I really have been desensitized now because I sit opposite you. Well, exactly. So, I mean, do you know I, how hideous and, like, ridiculous they've got to be to make me laugh? The pictures have got to be pretty odd. Yeah. The address, XFM, 97 Charlotte Street, London, W1P, 1LB. Apart from bad lyrics as well, I, I like it when, um, pop stars and, uh, marketing managers of, uh, record companies try and get clever with their, um, you know, uh, titles for albums and stuff. Remember, um, Wet 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 popped in, sold out. Nice. Oh, lovely. Beautiful. And Beautiful. you know, Tony Banks out of Genesis, he did his, um, solo project. And what he had, right, was the album there, and he had Banks across the top, right? And using the S to start the next word coming down was Statement. Clever. Banks, Banks statement. statement. Oh, I was watching, uh, Tony. Tony, Tony Banks, is he not the sports minister? Oh, I don't know. He was in Genesis when he was younger, though, wasn't he? I don't know. I think so. I don't know how it works. <laughs> well, because Phil, Phil Collins is Minister of, um, Shite. <laughs> right. Um, when I'm out, when I'm alone, right, and Jane's out, I sort of channel surf. I never watch a programme. Right. I sit down to it and I think, two minutes. You mm. shocked me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just sort of going through it and I was going back and forth between the Waltons and, like, the box. Right. Music television, you control. Yeah, yeah. MTV, mm -hmm. VH1, ooh. Um, and, uh, I got a glimpse of Toya Wilcox, which I stopped, obviously. Yeah. And, um, she's on one of these religious programs. I think it was on BBC Two. I don't know what it was, but it was with that bloke. Oh, God. I can't tell this anecdote. I, I can't stand it if I don't know the name. He's sort of like a Jeremy Paxman type thing. You know, he went to university. He was going to be a serious journalist. He wanted to be, K be KAD, but he settled for Les Dennis. Oh, it, it one of those sort of people that was on, um, That's Life. No, I'm not telling it until someone phones in. Toy Walk was on a religious program. What's that bloke's name? Then I'll tell it. 0171 580 2000. Gervais, have you ever watched an entire documentary all the way through? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know one, don't you? Beautiful. You don't look. Okay. Now, New Order's your favourite band of all time, isn't yes, it? Yes, that's right. Ah, uh, Paul Wright called. It was John Stapleton. Oh, was it? It was one of those, you know what I mean? It was sort of like the, the Paul Heine. Kieran, what is it, Prenderville and Chris Sir, all that sort of type of thing, you know what I mean? Right, so, and this was on BBC Two. And it's always one of those, well, th th those people, uh, uh, you're sitting with people and they go, oh, I went to university with him. <laughs> I know. And they suddenly realise it's not a proud, th you know. I know. Oh, and, and they just go never, quiet. It's never impressive, is it? It's never, you know, it's never Prince. <laughs> no, exactly. Or, yeah. um, I don't know, no, no, uh, yeah. somebody really great and groovy. Yeah, yeah. It's never, uh, I don't know, uh, say Rick Astley. And then you start realising that you're around someone's house and they go, and he comes on, and you just don't say anything. Yeah. And then someone goes, didn't you go, did you? No. <laughs> no, I thought I did, it, it was the other one, it was Chris Sell. Did you, any, did you go to anybody, uh, any, uh, school with anybody from Michael Jackson. <laughs> did you? Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Odd that. You went to school, presumably, in the States. Y well, he no. He was in Reading for a lot of his life. <laughs> right. Yeah. Was he some kind of exchange program? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We sent them, um, Charlie Chaplin, funnily enough. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. <laughs> Did you? It took a long time for them to get round it. You know what the Americans are like. You're making this up. Yeah. Um, anyway, Toy is talking to John Stapleton, 
And um, I suddenly, suddenly realised it's a religious program straight away because it was back over the church. Right? <laughs> and um, oh, you, you, nothing gets past you. <laughs> no way, no way. Could be archaeology is us. Um, and, so wait um, a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So people, yeah, Toya's on some religious program. <sighs> it's not worth it. John Stapleton. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. And I'm just flicked through and I went, hold on, it's Toya. And, uh, and he goes, so, so um, it was uh, very spiritual. She was, yes. And I realised she was talking about a wedding. She was going, it was very, very spiritual indeed. And he said, but no hymns. She went, no, uh, we had silence instead. <laughs> silence instead. So now we will do silence number three. It's four and a half minutes long, so keep your gob shut. Right? And, um, I think, oh, what is she talking about? He went, mm. She went, people are scared of, sorry, people are, that was Chris Eubank. <laughs> right? Um, she said, people are scared of silence. <laughs> what yeah. Talking and about? then she said, the thing is, during silence, there's a lot of unconscious thought. <laughs> What? You thought that you don't know you're thinking? You said it was three and a half minutes. I didn't think a thing <laughs> during that. I better plug into my unconscious <laughs> to find out what exactly I was standing up for for three minutes, going, who's the women in the hats? What are we doing here? What a load of pretentious twaddle well, that is. Well, I've never liked Toya. I've never liked her. Oh, she's, oh, she's alright. That's all the more reason to hate her. No, I don't hate her. All those, all those people that I just mentioned, they don't come close to Lenny Henry. I saw another bit of him doing his, his stand-up in America. Oh, God, it's so nauseating. He's got another series, apparently. Does anyone like Lenny Henry? Oh, well, obviously. It's a massive star. Does anyone listening to this show... Really like Lenny Henry? Yeah, yeah. Or, is there anyone that annoys me more than Lenny Henry? I, I should answer that one, shouldn't I? <laughs> yes. Do I win a prize? I think what you want to do there is yeah. that you want to sort of... <laughs> you want to speak correctly. <laughs> it's, a, it's another simple thing. <laughs> Gervais, um, which will help you out in your radio career. Oh, no. I'm um, Swerve Driver. That's three minutes forty-one. I've got to pick one. Seven minutes the news. Gervais, well, 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 before you move on, can mm, I just take... You know we talked minutes. about celebrities and going to school with celebrities and things. Yeah. Um, I have a very famous second cousin. Really? Yeah, I'm going to tell you who it, is, who it is in a minute. Really? Yeah. And I've got the best joke in the world. Have you? I should have been trailing that. That would have kept them on their tender hooks. Why right. are they sitting on tender hooks? So we've got... What are tender hooks? I think it's tenter hooks. I don't know what they are, but I don't think it's... Ten what are? Okay. 0171. Uh, who annoys me more than Lenny Henry? No one. You've won that one. So but, don't bother phoning me. But, but, but who annoys you, the listener, more than Lenny Henry? Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Clever. Because then it's thrown it to them. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's their simple. opinion. Oh! Simple things. Excellent. Debates. Oh, one. I noticed again. You you didn't bother to to give the whole phone number. <laughs> what did I say? You actually just said oh one seven one. It it used to be, as I recall, oh one seven one five eight zero, which is about half of it. But oh, no, you, just oh one seven one. Oh. XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais Show. Well, it's nearly over, but I have got a, a great joke, and we've got a simple rule here: that you only have to tell a joke on air if it's about going into a pub. That's right. Okay, you ready? Go on. <coughs> Penguin <laughs> goes into a pub, goes up to the bar, and says to the barman, "Have you seen my dad in here?" And he goes, "I don't know. What's he look like?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's not bad. It's all right. It's yeah. all right. Um, I had a similar one about something going into a pub. I think it was a, a, a turd and a wig, but I can't remember what the punchline is. If anyone knows, 01715802000, something about a turd and a wig. Uh, Gervais, I've also, uh, obviously got my celebrity relation, which I'll tell you about in a minute. That's about it, then. Yeah, we've enjoyed ourselves. Oh, dear. <laughs> Bald character, once drummer for Genesis, is more annoying. Who's lost this for? Smoked fish. Oh, what? What? What's this, Emma? That is... What? What tenterhooks are. Oh, what are they? Oh, tenterhooks are what? It's what smoked fish are hung from. Excellent. And bald character, that is, he's more annoying than, um, Lenny Henry. Henry. Okay. What's drama for Well, that's, that's Phil Collins. We can't say that. Of course you can. I can say Phil Collins is more, it's a matter of opinion, isn't it? Yeah, but he said that on the phone. He mm. said, please don't say that, it's a bit mean. Phil Collins is a deeply boring man. Anybody well, I can say that. I won't say who it is who said it then. Okay. We've got out of it, haven't we? Joe Pasquale is less funny. Ooh. Yeah, okay. Um, who's that? I mean, the point is that you can say that Phil Collins is a bold, boring man in the same way you can say Andy Peters is a raging... Gervais, um, 
Jilly um, thinks I'm adorable, apparently. Javis, um, I don't think we've got time to really talk about this. Okay, um, what have we, what have we got to do next week? Oh, um, uh, we can't say who your celebrity was, but I just thought we could phone in who you think it is. I mean, I've got a few ideas who your celebrity second cousin is. <laughs> your mum. Um, <laughs> no, um, uh, Mr. Ed? No. <laughs> Godzilla? No. The point is that this is a real celebrity, so, I mean, okay. celebrity. So, uh, you know, I'm not making it up. It's not going to be as exciting as, you know, whoa, it's Elvis or whatever. It's not that groovy, but it's but still... they do know. share some of your genetic material. No, you wouldn't know it. Really? No, you Normal? Would, you will, yeah. You Symmetrical? Would, Good really? A good looking person. Blood reaching the surface? A good looking person. Really? Yeah. Fantastic. Um, did they probably denied your existence or I mean, they're obviously gonna deny that they're related to you then, aren't they? Well, I'd say I tried to get some of their money. No. Um, yes. what else do we do? Uh, I'll send me some hideous pictures. Yeah, I'll just give the address again. XFM 97 Charlotte Street, London, W1P. I've got, I've got, I've got, I've got to go to the pub. Um, four o'clock again. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> one computer's not working. Is it not? No. This all sounds funny. I've got... What's that one? Is that the one I listen to? Just press a few buttons. No, I put it on there. Oh, you got? Desktop. I don't know. <laughs> I've got these two. Is your mic working? <coughs> Sorry, I got a bit of a cold. Um... <coughs> oh, God, I had a big list of things to talk about as well. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> no. Rocket from the Crypt. Oh, it's uh, a good start. On a rope. Yeah. Which is appropriate, because we've got a little Gravediggers track to play later, haven't we? Oh, about yeah. called Suicide. It's one of my favourite tracks, Gervais, it's by the Gravediggers, but it has got a bit of bad language. Well, that's okay, because you've played it to me a couple of times, and I reckon I've got it off pat. Really? I'm going to be bleeping it out live. You're going to do a live bleep yeah. out? Yeah. I should say, you know we usually have a few beers and we get throughout the show and I get suddenly drunk, which is unprofessional. This t saved a bit of time, turned up pissed. You turned up drunk today? Yeah. So that's <laughs> weird. I'll tell you what, But well, um, I'll be honest with you, Gervais, um, what? you know, normally, uh, if someone gets drunk, their, um, their speech begins to slur. Yeah. They talk rubbish. Yeah. Uh, no difference. No. You? That's the beauty of it. Yeah. That's the beauty of being me. Yeah, exactly. You know, you know, how, how, how drunk are you? Um, I had a little bit of wine. Did you? Yeah. Couple of glasses. It's a lovely. I might get a little bit melancholy. <laughs> what about the little baby kangaroos have to crawl all at their mums? I help them. Got a fax here for you, Steve, actually. Oh, lovely. Good news. It's from, uh, um, Becky. Um, she's listening to us, um, in bed. She's been a bit lazy. Um, she's been on holiday. And, um, she wants me to dedicate a song to, uh, to dedicate it to Stinky, sk Skanky Steve because he is an alien. Um, and she's done a little picture of him, Slimy Steve. Isn't that lovely? And she wants me to play a subterranean home sick alien by Radiohead. And that's sweet. So people, people do think of you. Lovely. And I got one from, uh, Laura, as I used to, says to Steve, you still sound as stupid as ever. You asymmetrical, asexual, rabid, anemic, flea-ridden, deformity. Oh, See, you have got people thinking of you. See? Yeah. I'd rather they didn't. Shady Bird, and if you'll be mine, then I'll be yours. And, uh, Baby Bird was actually in this week with Claire. Was he? Lovely, lovely man. Oh, Baby Bird was, uh, was yeah. it at XFM? he's very nice. Is he? He's got a beak and funny little claws. Oh, Rick. I oh, know, it oh, made me don't. laugh. It was, it, it was Oh, <laughs> my God, we're desperate. He used to be an We're egg. desperate <laughs> men, Rick, if you've got to resort to that kind I of I called gag. him Baby Bird, he went, I've never been called that before. Which is bizarre. But there's a band called Baby Bird, he's yeah. called Stephen. Can you go to turn that down next door? When we're trying to do a show. music, aren't Yeah, it's Emma, it's just, it's not on. That's, that's insane. That I can a, hear, I yeah. can hear a throb from the other room. Yeah. Someone's got, this is insane, Gervais. It's like I've been trying to host a radio show. Yeah. Me and now, now he's laughing. Yeah. Oh, oh well, it's, it's, well, anyway, it's, it's all gonna be. Um, we're gonna play a, um, a track that you've brought in. That's right. Go on, what is it? It's a fantastic tune by the Grave Diggaz. Yeah. Uh, part of the Wu-Tang Clan rap collective. Yeah. Right, it's from their album. Not um, to be confused with the Wu-Tang Clan. That's a little <laughs> shellfish. Yeah. That's into rap. Yeah, it yeah. swears a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, terrible, yeah. Um, the track is, Got a uh, muscle posse. The track is beautiful. You've probably heard it on the dance floor, maybe yeah. in some of indie club. That. Yeah. 1-800-SUICIDES. Yeah. Now, I would stress, Rick, it has got a bit of bad language. I know. I, I, I mean, I've, I've listened to this twice, and I reckon I've got it off pat. I reckon I'm gonna pull the fader down at just the right places and go, eh. Okay? <laughs> right, you're gonna sort of bleep yeah. it out. And if it goes wrong, so what? You know, that's real. People have a problem with swearing. I don't. Do you? No. Not I mean, I'm, I'm doing it because it's rules, and you know, no, we were- you know, the great thing about- We want to stay on air because, you know, we take our job seriously. We do. And, um, you know, I think we're, 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 sorry, excuse my friends, bloody good DJs. Well, I we? think you're absolutely right, Rick. Yeah. Let me shake your hand. Yeah, all right, there, there we yeah. are. A good yeah. shaking of a hand there. Um, I, I love a bit of rap. That wasn't actually French. No. Is <laughs> <laughs> it? It's weird, that, isn't it? Um, oh, pardon <laughs> the French. People always <laughs> yeah. say when they, yeah. uh, maybe say bollocks. Uh, uh, excuse my French, but le plume de ma tante. <laughs> hey, come on, language, language. Um, we'll, we'll be doing, learning a little bit of, uh, 
uh, foreign language later. I've bought in, um, instant Yiddish by Fred, uh, Kogos. I've always wanted to learn Yiddish. Really? Yeah. Um, oh. No, a schnick. Uh, for this. Um, some glick, some schlimmen. Yeah, for better, for worse. So I'll be, I'll teach you a little useless phrase like that. <laughs> out of the old, uh, instant Yiddish book. But first, what was this? Grave diggers. It's grave diggers. Um, they're keeping it real. They're keeping it raw. So there is a bit of bad language. Yeah. Well, mine's raw. Um, you keeping it raw? Yeah, of course I have. Um, right, I'm gonna have a go at this then. Alright. Right. Don't get no, it. No, don't. Shut up. Right, I've got to play this. Shut up then. Don't put me off. I've got to concentrate. Can you bleep, it out, bleep it out live? I know, well, yeah, shut up. Alright. Right. Is it going? Oi. Can I get that actual mix with me going, ah, on Yes, it. you can. Yes. And that's for Steve Vox, who's listening in Reading. It's from Lee to him. Um, and Steve is the president of the Geeks, Nerds, and Losers Society, the GNL, uh, Lee's the Vice President. I got thrown out of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what embarrassing walking down the street with you. Exactly. Oh, it's dear. a terrible state. Yeah. Uh, Gervais, it was Saturday night last night. Yeah. And I didn't get to, to, to I didn't get to sleep until six in the morning. Ooh. <laughs> well, flatmates having a party. Yeah. Not invited? No. Next time though. Well, maybe, maybe. I don't know. I don't know where I hang around with them. Well, I, you know... At least I look after you. I sort of... People say to me, is Steve really as ugly as you say? I go, he's worse. Do you know what I mean? But that's... <laughs> a, no, do you know what I mean, though? You're doing me a favour. Well, of course I am. You're protecting me. Of course I am. I'd say one day, right, yeah. it's just one of me at the moment, but one yeah. day there'll be a whole squadron. It'll be like Planet of the Apes. Oh, my God. And you don't actually need anyone else to sort of, like, uh, breed, do you? Exactly. We can just reproduce as we are. <laughs> It'll be like Planet of the Apes, right? You, th there'll be sort of a Charlton Heston figure. Planet of the Squids. It'll crash land. Get your damn dirty tentacle off me. It'll crash land. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And there'll just be loads of me crawling around. Yeah. All identical. And they go, them on horseback. And they see like Bristol Temple meet and they go, oh my god, they blew it up. Yeah. It's back in Bristol with all your, oh no. Yeah, incredible. To charlatans and then. There must be an organisation of volunteers or something who, if it's like touch and go, if it's really serious, if you're like clinically depressed about it and you really can't get a woman. They don't want just people turning up who can get girls and saying, oh, I fancy, you know. But in your case, you know, they'll, they'll speak to you, they'll see you, and I think, you know, there must be some sort of national health thing or private where you can actually sleep with, um, I don't know, a voluntary worker. <laughs> you know you know what I mean, so? though? Well, yeah, there's That'd people that... Yeah, yeah, I know, but there's people that, um, I don't know, volunteer for geriatric duty, you know, and they're exploding all over the place. They're covered in the stuff, right? Um, there's people that work on leper colonies, right, for, you know, for nothing. There must be someone who will sleep with you out of sympathy. You don't want that. Of course you don't. You don't want that, do you? Well, let's not be hasty, Rick. <laughs> I mean, these people, I mean, especially if they need some sort of free publicity, you know, get a bit of, um, you know, sort of press and media attention. Yeah. I ought to sort of help to publicise their campaign, really. There's probably an organisation that go, you know, and we go, they go off to, like, um, just strange climes and go on to, like, leper islands and that, and they work with them. Um, or... They can sleep with you. Now, that's got to do the lepers some good, doesn't it? Yeah. You know what I mean? Wouldn't that be terrible if that was the option, right? And suddenly, volunteers to leper colonies doubled. It was like going to Torre Molinos. Yeah. Let no, me on I, the I, bus. I, Sorry, there's no room on the bus, but it, you're at the back there. Yeah. Going, well, um... <laughs> Well then, here we go. Here I am then. Yeah. No, no, but I, no, I, sorry, I, I, I signed up for the, for the lepers. Yeah. Um, licking their wounds. <laughs> well, sorry, but. <laughs> Geriatric duty. Yeah. When I bed it, it out. Oh, dear. Oh, you know, I heard a song in the week, right? I've heard it before. It's by Ween. And it goes, push your little daisies and make them come up. And I don't know what it's called. 0171-580-2000. I don't know where to look. Push your little daisies and make them come up. It's like that. It is. It's rubbish. I've been around, going around singing There's that. There's no song with that lyric. It's in. like that. It goes, push the little dick and make them shut up. up. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. Shut up. That's what my God friends have been saying for the last four days. Oh, you're really irritating me today. Like, people will go and go, and, uh, if you'll be mine, oh, but not too annoying. But, um, after about ten times, you go, oh, can you sing something else? But when you've heard, push your little dick and make them go up. Shut up. up. No. It can get really annoying. Yes, it, it really can. can, can't it? Shut um, up. Okay, one of those, you and me song. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> it's great, that's just gonna gag. I love that one. It's great, actually. Maybe we should play it again. Well, maybe later on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not that mad about it. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, I like that. She's not quite as irritating uh, as, as me. You. 
No, generally, no, generally. <laughs> who is? Um, uh, we were talking earlier about um, how hideous you, um, how you look, and you can't get a woman because you're quite nasty as well. And, um, Emma, uh, our producer here, who thought, um, that this is not fair, you know, because you are, Steve is quite affectionate. When you get to sort of know, you know like E.T., when you first watch E.T., you go, ugh, and then by the end you think, oh, do you know what I mean? It sort of like gets that deeper. And she said, she went, I remind you, Steve, what I said when I first met you, and this is like her best, you know, stab at a compliment to make you feel better. She said, you know, I thought, you're really not that ugly. So the assumption is I am ugly. Yeah. It's just not as bad as yeah. she's made out. And that's like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And she's like, no, don't be silly. You're really good. You're really not that ugly. Yeah. It was a good effort though, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, that was, that was nice, Emma. That was really nice. It was she a good effort, it. but, um, it was, it was, it was shallow and, uh, and futile. It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> look at his little face. Oh, look. Look at that fax over there. <laughs> what is that fax <laughs> though, right? Too Ricky, Steve's skin problem closed up, which actually, um, what they've silicon got. What they've particles. Someone sent in a fax, right, and they've got these sort of hideous kind of <laughs> mutated, um, cells, whatever, and they've, and they've put on the fax, Too Rick, Steve's skin problem closed yeah. up. You've never said I've got a skin problem. No, I haven't. You haven't got They're a skin problem. They're just assuming. No. It's, it's almost translucent, his skin. It's very powerful. It's like, you know, like those new Newborn fish, when you can see all the hearts, can't you? All the hearts <laughs> well, in many fish. They've got one each. You're lots of fish, lots of hearts. Gervais, shut up. You're irritating me now, and you're oh. abusive, and you're just winding me up. Oh. No, I'm a little bit offended by I it. I know. You see, you should be. But what about this this charity thing? There must be one. Oh one seven one five zero two thousand. Oh, that would be fantastic. That'd be quite, and it, you know, it'd be like uh, one pound fix. You'd write yeah. on the little form. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah. they could get friends and relatives to sponsor you. Would that, be, would that be per stroke or per shag? I think I, it's I for the whole thing, yeah. the whole event. Yeah. It'll be a big event. You know those guys, um, that, I think it was a, f a hoax, but they were going to televise <laughs> the first moment they lost their virginity. Uh, so we're gonna, it, they were going to broadcast it down the internet, all yeah. right? And they were going to have sex on the internet live, and everyone was going to applaud and watch and pay for it. Maybe I could organise that as well, make a bit of money out yeah, of it. Yeah, think of the technology by then, though. Incredible. They would just be able to think it, weren't they, and, like, see you losing your virginity. You, you, and they all have big swollen heads. You might be good looking in like the year 2090. You never know because it's all well, isn't it? You know, in Bristol, you're a good looking fella, aren't you? In Bristol. I'm a good looking guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> oh, this is Bell and Sebastian, <sighs> uh, the boy with the arm strap. Oh, this, one, is, this seven, is for one. Jim Hobbs. Who said, uh, no, um, who said, can we hear more about Jezuk? And I better tell people now, we've had a lot of factors about Jezuk. Jezuk is spelt J E Z O C. I made it up. That's how it's spelt. Okay? All right, Gervais. You'll tell us a bit more about Jezuk, will you? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've got a new, I've got a whole new storyline. Before you carry on, um, 01715802000, I've got some, um, sponsorship forms, like, <laughs> already printed up. <laughs> yeah, so excellent. just send, you know, give me a call, I can post one yeah. to you. I will sleep with Steve, or I will go and work with a leopard Connolly. Connolly? Billy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, just shut a, up. Play a record. Scottish bloke with a beard you, with his leg, play legs falling off. drunken sock. <laughs> It's quiet and quiet, isn't it? Mm. Mm. A couple of phone calls. Rob phoned and said, slap Steve for saying 0181 instead of 0171. See, it's the singly most important thing. The number is 0171 580 2000. That's why you don't hear me mucking that up. Yes. Do you know what I mean? I apologize. Um, pump Ricky with more wine and challenge him to quack over the Anti Nowhere League. So what? I don't know. I've. I've. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Again. What? That was a sentence? <laughs> No, shut up. Um, I had something to say then. You are drunk. Oh, yeah. I can no, smell no, it on up. your breath. Shut up! I can smell it on your oh, breath, for you. God's sake. Don't, don't wind me up, man. Um, yeah, I've got this new storyline for Jezuk. Um, uh, I want, I want to help with it. What, sure. what it is, right? I think it starts off with this, uh, villain, right? Um, Jezuk brings him in, right? And, uh, he's murdered maybe, maybe a little kid. Or, you know, someone's husband. The, the woman's there and she's terrible. Well, you would be. Yeah. Right? So. Jezek's in there, and she goes, he goes, don't, don't worry, um, he's gonna, by the time he gets out, um, Steve will have a girlfriend, right? She goes, <laughs> right, it won't be my boy back, will it? No, but you can have one of mine. Um, I've got loads or something, right? Anyway, um, he goes to, goes to the court, right? And he's only tampered with the jury, and he's a nasty piece of work. Oh, not the murderer. Yeah. yeah. He walks free, and he sort of like, winks at Jezek on the way out. Do you think Jezek's gonna let it lie? Jezek's not gonna let that villain, uh, what, has he got a piece of evidence? Well, no, he goes after him, shoots him anyway. 
because do you know it's just redundant. It turns out he, the bloke didn't actually do it, but you know, as Jezek says, better you know, kill innocent people than let one you know guilty person go free. <laughs> um, so <laughs> that's Jezek's that, philosophy. Yeah, yeah. And shoot first, ask questions later. You know, you don't want to be stitched up. He's got a reputation. Um, and then, uh, he gets off with a woman, and they have, they have another kid, and, uh, it's all right. Yeah. I'll stop you there. Why? Um, Jezuk just killed an innocent man. He's your superhero. He's your, you know, your heroic, horrible cop. He just killed an innocent man. I'm a little bit disappointed. Oh, so he's got to be perfect, has he? Well, I'm just a little bit disappointed. I, well, no. He can't be perfect. He's got things to do. We know, we know he's got problems. He drinks too much. He kills innocent people. You go out there every day. See how, see how you survive. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got Mama Said Knock You Out lined up. It's our, one of our joint little favourites. We like this one and we like some other songs, don't we? Yeah. Cause we're like mates. I got a little plot. Yeah. Right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's Jezuk, right? <laughs> and he retires. He just gets out the whole thing. <laughs> All right, right, that's the final one. We've cut, we've, we've pulled, you know, we've uh, pulled a discreet veil over the whole Jezuk debacle. Right. All right, is that okay? Yeah. Rick, forget Jezuk. Right. Because I've got my own show. I'll be telling you about it. Have you really? Yeah, it's fantastic. Could, am I in it? No, not really. So much to do with, right, okay. Well, it's, it's, it's a genuine one I've come up with. You know this song, right? Mama said, knock you out. I like to like, you know, shadow box that. I've been working out today on the big bag, doing a bit of boxing, because I'm in training. I challenged Camfu to a fight when I was pissed. <laughs> Thursday night, he was swaying. I, I challenged him to fight. I offered him a thousand pounds prize money. That was the purse. Whether he won or lost, he still said no. Well, he's the worst. He's about 14 or something. Yeah, Can but he's about six foot. Yeah. Maybe he was scared of killing me. Yeah. Jezzet is not scared of that. Jezzet's gone. He's right. out of it. Okay. There might be a comeback special one day, but thank God he's Let's gone. work on it. Well, oh. That's on, my man. challenge to Canfield. You know I mean? knock you yeah, out. yeah, I'm putting it out. I'm putting it out over the airs. Yeah, you're you keeping I mean? it real. You know, like, you know, Death Throw, Puffy and all that, and Tupac, and that. that's like me and Canfield. Oh, that's I'm a saying, fantastic idea. I'm saying, come and get it, Canfield. I'm saying, I'm here, you know what I mean? That East it, Coast, West Coast rivalry we can yeah. recreate amongst DJs. Yeah, yeah. Steve Lamack, outside now, have you seen him? He's a weedy little dweeb. Yeah? Oh, fantastic. You can't actually say that, because, I mean, he's a nice, nice guy, and, uh, Well, maybe so. Yeah, so you're gonna fight Lamack, I'm gonna fight Canfield. Oh, brilliant. Let's keep it with an XFM, you know, Crowley. Yeah. Remember he had, he had a fight once at school, and his defense, lucky, he had a hymn book on him. And he <laughs> hit the bloke in the nose with the hymn book. So you don't mess with Crowley, because he's probably carrying, uh, you know, Bibles, hymn yeah. books. You know. He's loaded, he's got some kind of religious paraphernalia with Old him. parchment papers. Yeah, crucifixes. Can, paper cuts are the worst. Oh, nasty. Oh, imagine that, a little bit of papyrus across the eyelid. Oh, you don't want to mess with Crowley. No, I'm saying Canfield, come and get it, you know what I mean? He hangs out with his deft tones and all that lot, right? Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Should we just ask out, who should we threaten out? Who else can we threaten out? Um, well, let's, let's not go too mad. Well, uh, what about, uh, Henry Rollins? Well, I've made no. a mistake. I don't, I don't, <laughs> yeah. I've made an error there. He's been there are himself. a lot of people I could have chosen. Jarvis, for instance. <laughs> <laughs> I've gone straight to A lot to of a... people come before Henry yeah. Rollins, don't I do. they? I was a fool. Um, some British heavyweight boxers, for example. Yeah. You know, I'd rather fight than Henry Rollins. Um, before we carry on, before we, uh, cause I'm oh. gonna tell you about my, uh, my TV idea in a minute, Rick. Cause this is an idea I've yeah. been working on. And it's serious. It's like, you know, Jezuk's got a certain strength, a certain quality. Yeah. Um, yeah. and I think you'll like this as well. But before we do that, I've been sent a, f a picture. A, a picture's been faxed through. Oh, excellent. And it's a little challenge, as ever. Right. It's, uh, make Ricky laugh. If yeah. you laugh at the picture I've got here, Rick, yeah. then, uh, Martin in Crouch End. Yeah. He wins, uh, well, I, I thought we could give him- I like it already, Martin in Crouch End. I thought maybe we could give him the Baby Bird album. Why? Why do you mean we- th it's mine, you haven't got one, so you- th Go on, then, yeah. Well, I'll give that to him. But anyway, here's a picture. Uh, yeah. see what you think. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. There's a little explanation as well. And it's subtle because I had to get right to the end for the big line. Uh, you're not allowed to see this. No. Uh, that is fantastic. So well done so to Martin. Martin. I think Martin. He wins an award, yeah, he, he does, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. So if you want to win um something <laughs> tasty, give us a, a, give us a call or fax oh. us through a picture. O one seven one five eight oh one two three four. Your pictures please. Make Ricky laugh. Um you know your idea of this new show, which mm. I haven't heard yet, right? But we should start getting together all the other stuff or we're gonna get ripped off. That was I sounded just like Albert Tatlock then in the early eighties. Oh we dear. should go out yeah, right. <laughs> I love that fact that you, you sort of, maybe you've got a sentence, it's got 15 <laughs> words in. You reckon, well, if I get, if I get out an average of five coherent words to every 15 that I need to say in a sentence, oh, that'll be enough. God, right, jam or ISIS? Either one, both rubbish. 
Oh, no, come on. They're both good big bands, aren't they? All right, the Gervais, next, let's talk about my, my, my TV idea. Okay, let's do All Around the World, because it's probably going to be big All Around the World, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> Before that, the jam, All Around the World. Um, got a fax here from my mate Mick. He's listening. Say hello to him. Say hello to Mick. Uh, hello. Yeah. And, uh, apparently there's, he's found a great website about Joey Deacon. So we'll check that one out a little bit. About later. Joey Deacon? Yeah. Oh, Joey. Yeah. Um. Oh. Um. <laughs> um, <laughs> we've had loads of ideas, haven't we, in the past? Yeah. And actually, I was wondering whether we should put out the phone number 0171 2000. Um, the reason being that A, you might perhaps want to, want us to perhaps, um, relate an old anecdote that you once heard on the show that you'd yeah. love to hear again. We could recreate we the could, golden we years. We could recreate some of the classic moments from the yeah. Ridge of Asia. Yeah. Um, and also, of course, we've had tens of thousands of ideas hmm. for products, for services, for yeah. TV shows especially, and uh, board games, all kinds of stuff. I mean, the, the, we've come up with one recently, haven't we, that's the, the, the patch on, Sleep With Me or Play With Lepers. That's right. I mean, that that's a good service, isn't it's it? It's an interesting show, that. Yeah. I, I imagine that's sort of Channel 4. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, later. Later, really. Yeah, and um, we've also, of course, most famously, perhaps, had uh, the Penis Puppet Theatre. Penis Puppet Theatre. So easy to manufacture. I don't know why publishers aren't, you know, knocking on my door. Yeah. A lot of other people are knocking on my door. Um, Ricky Gervais meat rations. Oh. Should be fun recreating. Get in the queue, mum. It's Ricky Gervais's meat rations. Yeah. Oh. All kinds of great games. To be perfectly Re unfranked. To be who snork. Who snork. <laughs> yeah. Great games. And if you, I mean, if you've not ever heard us describing these, the well, you've missed out. Yeah. You, you've learned your mistake. The tease penguin's probably my greatest invention. The tease penguin. Can you tell us again? I forget. Well, it's just a penguin. All right. You train. You put it in a lovely little French maid outfit. And it comes in with <sighs> sort of breathes fishy breath on you and slaps you around the face with its flipper. Yeah. Oh. Um Jezuk, obviously. But it doesn't let you go any further. No. That's why it's the cheese penguin. Yeah, oh, I see. Yeah. Um Extra Family Fortunes. Oh I can see that on telly myself. Yeah, it's incredible. I don't know where you got the idea from. I, they just come into my head sometimes. Do they? Yeah. But anyway, here's my new idea, Jamaica. Oh, it's, it's a great yeah. show. It's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's, an, it's an exciting show, right? Right, go on. It's the future. Oh, yeah. All right. Crime has got so bad in the future, no, that it, it's terrible, that, um, that there's not enough hours in the day, right, for all the cases to be tried in court. Right. right because there's just not enough time. It's a bit like, you know, Judge Dredd sort of thing. Yeah. So what happens is, right, there's a night court, okay? And it, oh, it, yeah. it comes into session at 12 o'clock. Yeah. All right. And uh, there's lots of lawyers and stuff, and they really deal with the dredge. I'm talking about the dredge, the crimes which you think are open and shut, Rick. Yeah. All right. The sort of stuff that Jesuit would just sort out, right, you know, with, with, with a bullet. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It, we're talking rapists and murderers and stuff. Yeah. But all uh, people who just piss him off. Exactly. But Ronnie Midnight. Oh, right. Ronnie Midnight. He's the hard-boiled uh, lawyer, right? That the, sort of the, the main figure at Night Court, mm. and he gets dealt all these rough cases, right? And he thinks it's open and shut. Everyone mm. thinks, oh, that person he should be electrocuted or whatever. Yeah. But no, Ronnie sees something in them. He investigates the crime during the day, so he's yeah. only got like twelve hours to yeah. sort it out, and then he presents the case at Night Court, right at night, and uh, maybe often it's like Perry Mason meets. Um, so meets, he wastes uh, the... taxpayers' money investigating people that might be innocent. Yeah, Jesse yeah. just kills them. Well, maybe so. Yeah. That's, that's why Ronnie Midnight's much more loved. But uh, uh, it's great, it would be great, and it would yeah. just, it would start off with like, dun, 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 all rise, juju, ju, ju, for night court. Yeah. Be fantastic. And, I like uh, that. It would sort of set in the future. Am I in that? Well, mm, not really. But, and, and, you know, who knows, Jezuk maybe could get, you know, he could, he could make a guest appearance. What do you think? I like it. Night court. I like it. I don't, it, it? Yeah. What, what's the problem? This rubbish about all this taxpayers' money investigating whether they're actually, you know... They're innocent. Mm. You're more of a Jesuit kind of guy. Yeah. Just shoot, shoot first. Don't even ask questions. <laughs> don't, don't it's, if it's, if it's time's like, you know, of the essence, why ask questions? You've done, you know, what's the point? Yeah. He just like opening up old wounds, which is another favourite pastime of Jezuk sometimes. Oh, and also a great he idea. He loves opening up old wounds. A great idea for maybe a board game or a TV show. Old wounds. <laughs> it's fantastic. Oh, I'm going to work on this. Oh, and I've got Tip the Balance. I haven't even described that. Tip the Balance? After Embrace. Can you tell us? Emma goes out with a bloke in this. Oh. Yeah. What's Tip the Balance? Long-haired type. What's the Tip the Balance? Well, Jezzet wouldn't tolerate that. What's Tip the Balance? It's a board game for four rugby players or more. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Or the infirm. Or people who've just got no dignity left and we can get them on screen doing that. 
This is uh, my weakness is none of dot dot dot. I obviously ran out of. I was uh, reading News World on my way here, and um, I didn't know this. You know, um, uh, Tony Blair yeah. is the prime minister. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tony Blair. Um, his father-in-law, which is Sherry's dad, is uh, that bloke um, out after Death Is Do Part. What well, Liverpool... No, no, the, his son. Oh, blimey. something about he's a. I don't know, I should get this right, really, because it could be libelous, but it's something to do with some sort of doll cheat or something like that. What? Yeah, apparently. Cherry Blair's dad's a doll cheat? Yeah. Something like that. Really? Always claiming some sort of benefit for, I don't know. But he was always the same when he was living with his dad, Alf. <laughs> it, 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 he was married to you and stuff, wasn't he? I mean, Sherry, uh, Sherry Blair's mum, is she no, I'll stop you there, Rick. I'll stop you there. It's so uh, incestuous, isn't it's it? It's fiction. I've ex tried to explain this to you before, haven't I? The stuff on the TV, yeah. a lot of it is real. Mm. Some of it's fake. They're mm. not really those people. And it's like EastEnders, for instance, that's not real. That's not real people. Uh, yeah, well, obviously, because obviously that is real, because I've seen them in real life. They were at Phoenix, got them playing football. So that is real. No, that was the actor. That was the actors. Mm. Phil Mitchell was there, and Ricky Butcher. That was the actors. I've, yeah. We have been through this before. Because uh, I went through this the same day that I explained to you that... It, only in the cat world can you piss on an object. I've got a new so stereo that way. Mm. They just get out of the shop, but it was too late. I've got a new stereo. And it doesn't, it, it sort of, it shorts out, because I, I actually weed in one of the back of the speakers. Did you, did you? Yeah.